So today's October 1st, and unfortunately winter is coming fast. Is now a bad time to do a tune-up on my oil boiler? Let's go through this steam boiler and take a look. Okay, don't look at my truck, it's a disaster. All right, so I got pretty much everything I need. This is my bait and tackle kit. Well, really not. I keep all my oil burner components in there. Nozzles, Mega Lock and Teflon if I need it. Service bag, oil bucket, gloves, paper towels, and a light because it's just a little too dark in here. That's much better. Before we do anything, power off to the boiler. There should always be a power switch on the boiler itself. Never trust the switch at the top of the stairs. Because all it takes is someone to come over and say, oh, I forgot that switch was off, and turn it on. Would you want to have the top of the burner open, or even worse, have the top of the boiler open, and then all of a sudden you hear a call for heat? If there's no switch directly on the boiler, we'll want to come over to the breaker panel, find out what breaker it is, and shut it off. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put gloves on, because oil has a tendency of getting a little messy. Then next, there are two little clips behind the back of the transformer. There's one on this side and one on this side. We're going to loosen them up. Just a little bit. You don't have to take them off completely. And we're going to move the two little brackets out of the way and open up our transformer. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen up on this flare nut. Now this little copper tube comes from our oil pump, but our oil pump has a solenoid on it so we don't have to shut off any valves yet. Okay, should be good. Get it by hand. And we want to move it out of the way just a little bit. We don't want to kink or damage this, this little copper tube. Then we're going to loosen up the lock nut. This should only be on hand tight. So as we're taking the burner assembly, I want to keep our thumb over the, the little opening so no oil comes pouring out. With Car Lindsay, a good little tip is you got to flip them upside down in order to bring them out. And we're going to take a look. Oh yeah, that's dirty. Then when we bring it over to our oil bucket, we can use one of our electrodes to hang it on the end. And we'll see all the oil start to drip out. So now I'm going to loosen up on the retention head. Slide it off. Okay. And we're going to put that off to the side. We're going to clean that in a minute. But right now, this is what we're looking at. These are our electrodes. And this is our nozzle. So our nozzle, we typically change every year. We have a couple numbers. We have 0.85 and 80 degree B. This means 0.85 gallons per hour. 80 degrees is an 80 degree spray angle. And B stands for bore. It's like a solid a solid stream of oil. There's a whole calculation that goes into, into play to figure out you know, what type of nozzle should be on each boiler. All right, so now we're gonna change the nozzle. So we're gonna need a three quarter wrench and a five eighths wrench. And again, this shouldn't be on crazy tight. It's probably only on, you know, just a little bit past hand tight. We don't want to get oil everywhere. And once it's loose, it's it shouldn't be in there any tighter than we can take it out by hand. And we want to hold this over there. That's exactly why. We're going to look through and we're going to find our nozzle. And here we go, 0.85 80B. Pop it out. Then go through one more time with our wrench and just a little bit past hand tight is good. So next we can take this little nifty tool by Beckett. It's for electrodes. You can look, make sure our electrodes are good distance. Now we're just gonna take a quick rag and I'm just gonna clean off this retention head. Maybe take a brush and that looks pretty good. We're never going to get it perfect, and it's never going to be spotless again, but we just want to get all that big debris off. Definitely don't want to keep that on there. All right, put it back on. See, there's a little slit that fits between the electrodes. We can get our retention head back on. It's going to fit perfectly right there. No guessing or anything. You push it down, tighten it back up, just like that. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to put this back in. Now, remember, upside down first. And we're going to rotate it as we go in, and it's only going to fit in one way. It's going to fit in there just like that. Okay, so now we're going to put our lock nut back on, and again, only hand tight. And we're going to go back and put on our copper line. Hand tight, I like to make sure I can go around at least three times before I take out any wrench to tighten it. So we're going to go back through and snug it up a little bit. See, this one is bent a little bit, so we're just going to... Bend it back into place a little bit. And we just want to make sure that when it sits down, you see a little bit of a spring, which means that 
that the electrodes are sitting on top of our spark igniters. Next, we're going to take a look at our CAD cell. Make sure our CAD cell is nice and clean. Which this looks at the flame and it measures it in a resistance or, or an ohm resistance. If this is dirty for any reason, you know, sometimes there's soot that builds up or dust or, or anything could build up. It's going to affect the amount of light that the CAD cell could see, which could trigger a lockout by accident. You know, it, the flame might be good, but if this is blocked, it doesn't know that. So everything looks really good. We're gonna put our transformer back down. We're gonna put on our clips, tighten them up. All right, so the next thing we're gonna change is gonna be our oil filter. We're gonna first start by closing our firematic valve. This is gonna stop any oil from coming from the tank inside. Until the top comes loose, valve is all the way closed. And then this should only be on just past hand tight and what I like to do is I like to keep just a little container underneath to catch any oil coming out of the Tiger Loop that we have or from the copper tubing going up to the Tiger Loop. You know, we want to do what we can to prevent any, any kind of spills or messes. This is just a tough place to do it because i got the cinder blocks right here, so you can really only do so much. Okay. Not too bad. Now we're going to take our old oil filter and we're going to put it in our bucket and get it out of our way. Take our new spin on oil filter, maybe take a little bit of oil from inside the top and just go around on our rubber o-ring just to, you know, get a nice good seal and we're going to tighten our new one back on. And I'm going to go ahead and open up our firematic valve back. All right, so now that we got all the big stuff done, we took care of the burner, we took care of the oil filter. Now we're going to want to go through and we're going to want to check our heat exchanger to make sure there's no soot or nothing built up in there that would prevent any of the flue gases from leaving the boiler. It's pretty easy enough. There was just one screw in the front in this corner and one back in this corner. And we're going to unbolt this. Got all the bolts undone, so let's go up the top and take a look at our heat exchanger. Oh yeah, look at that. Good amount of soot build up, so we're going to take a brush really quick in there and we're going to clean all that out. Is that... Anyone from North Jersey knows exactly what this is. And just a quick little side note. Chimney's drafting well. So I'm going to set the hose just right in between each section, and I'm going to brush through and get all this soot out. And this is our final result. Not a crazy difference, but there's not that thin layer of carbon soot buildup anymore. We can definitely see we brushed it out really well. Time to go through and tighten everything back up. Got the cover back on. We're moving along nicely. A couple more details. We're good to go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close down the bottom of my sight glass valve. Drain the water out. And we're going to remove our sight glass and give it a quick brush just to get all this mud out. Nice and easy. Don't want to break any glass today. Over. And out. Definitely dirty. Find our little sight glass brush. Get the top too. And since we took it out, we're going to change these two rubber gaskets. For that we're gonna break out the old bait and tackle. I just keep all my assorted steam boiler components and over here I got my gaskets for my sight glass. This one's in there pretty good, so we're gonna have to pop this out, push it a little bit and it'll come out. Up first and then down. Tighten it by hand. We'll go through with our wrench and don't want to break our sight glass. But then again, we also don't want any water to leak out. The benefit of cleaning the sight glass 
is more of a visual. It If someone's going to come down and take a look, they want to know exactly where the water level is in the boiler. They don't really want to guess. Would you want to guess where the water level is and say, ah, the water level's fine. I'm not worried about it when it turns out it's actually low, but you couldn't tell because you couldn't see it. Open our valve back up. Maybe we'll wash it out a few times. See? There we go. Nice and clean. And we'll pull back on our fitting. You see that? And that is plugged up. We're going to have to clean that. Disconnect the power to our pressure troll. I hate these push on connectors. I don't know why they come with them. Disconnect our pressure troll. Inside here is not super dirty, but take the soft handle end and just loosen it up a little bit so then we can get it out by hand. Now we're gonna take our sight glass brush and just push it through to get majority of the mud out. And then we'll be able to rinse it through. And look at that, nothing's draining. It. Ugh, look at that. All that was stuck inside this pigtail. Now we're draining, that's what we want. Now we're nice and clean. Now what would have happened if we didn't clean this out? We would have got a late night service call that the boiler's leaking, there's steam coming out of the boiler. Well, if the pigtail's plugged up and the pressure can't make its way to the pressure troll to cut off the boiler at its set pressure, then the pressure in the boiler is just going to keep rising and rising until it comes out of the safety relief valve. Now that we're all nice and clean, we've got the mega lock and Teflon back on. We're going to put our pigtail back on. There we go. Pressure troll next. And finally, our pressure gauge. And two. Okay, first thing we're going to do, disconnect the wire to our probe. Not lose this little lock nut. Loosen up the mounting screws. Just loosen them up. We don't got to take them off completely. Slide it right off. Now we just have to drain the boiler water level below the probe. We can take a look really fast, make sure it's in good shape. We connect the hose to our boiler drain and just drain a little bit out. I'm gonna watch my sight glass and I just wanna watch the water level get below the probe. We don't have to drain the whole boiler. Now, before I did this, this boiler doesn't have an auto feed, so I'm not too worried about it. If it did have an automatic water feed, I would make sure that the valve is closed off so I'm not feeding water in as the water level is trying to drain out. So it only took about a gallon and a half out. Okay, our water level is definitely below our probe, so now we're gonna loosen up on it and take a look, just make sure it's nice and clean. If not, we'll swap it out and put a new one on there. Little dirty, so we're gonna clean it up a little bit. We're gonna take some emery cloth really fast and we're gonna clean up our probe. We just wanna make sure that there's nothing that gets in the way of our low water cutoff getting a good reading. I'd say that's pretty good. Let's um, make a lock back on the thread to the probe. Our probe is one of the most, if not the most important parts of the boiler. If that doesn't work or something goes wrong, do you really wanna hope that the probe will do its job? Or would you rather take it out, look at it, make sure it's clean, and know it's gonna perform properly? Not gonna do it too far because we're gonna to wanna to put our, tighten that, put everything back together. All right, now the last thing we gotta do is we gotta, Fill our boiler until it gets to that mark, which is where this little gasket on our cyclist should be. Pretty good, right there, perfect. Now I'd just like to do a quick recap just to make sure that I covered everything, everything's tight, and I didn't forget anything. Clean the low water cutoff probe, clean the sight glass, clean the pigtail, change the nozzle, check the electrode, change the oil filter, at the end, I like to wipe down the boiler. Just gonna wipe everything down really good. Get all the dust off, make it look nice and clean. All right, I just ran upstairs really fast. I turned the thermostat on, so we're gonna kick our power on. And now that we have a nice clean boiler, we're gonna let it run. 
wait till we get to our steam pressure. And when our boiler goes off on pressure, we are good to go.